Welcome back. So, we got Inheritable Dual Phase Grave Swords, and that's amazing. I didn't expect that to happen, at least not at this point, but I guess given that we're in Gen 7 now, I guess it's not too out of the question. I mean, especially since it happened, but still, it's really cool. There are 8 Might and 6 Might respectively, you have the sword that's 8 Might and the bow that's 6 Might, and naturally that's going to limit how many people can use it to a good degree, because they're not that big in terms of might, so you're definitely going to want a good attack stat to use these. And I figured it would be worth discussing these weapons and the scenarios in which you can use them in, especially for specific units. And I don't expect this video to be as long as maybe some of the other ones, including maybe like the arcane videos, because this one's definitely going to be a lot more limited in scope, because again, 8 might and 6 might is not a lot. Still, a lot of people are going to be giving this weapon to a lot of units, so I figured a guide wouldn't be a bad idea whatsoever. So, we might as well just get started with the Wyvern Katana, which, again, is an 8 might dual phase brave sword. It inflicts minus 8 speed on the unit, but also grants plus 5 defense and res, which honestly isn't a bad trade-off, especially for the armors. In my opinion, the armors are probably going to be some of the best with this, especially the ones that are min-maxed. But I do think one of the highlight standout units for this is going to be Legendary Seleth, because he does have Holy War's End, which is a reverse desperation, if his HP is above 50% or more. So, if he were to use Wyvern Katana, then he could quad before the foe can get a second attack out, assuming they double, which more often than not they're going to because the speed really isn't that high to begin with, but still, with Holy War's End in Wyvern Katana, he'll always be able to get 4 attacks out unless there's no follow-up before the foe can double, and then he'll get an Ignis as long as there isn't any guard, which I think is really, really strong. And it's funny to think that Self has gotten so many boosts in the past maybe like couple months because of Inheritable Swords, but yeah, no, I do think Self is a really good user of this. You also have Winter Zephiel, who is definitely a lot more min-max than Arden. Arden does have a bit more attack thanks to Arden's Blade, but the sheer amount of res that you're getting from Wyvern Katana on top of his base stat is staggering. I'm pretty sure it's a 25 res difference, assuming you don't just run the same weapon on Arden, but even then, I do think Winter Zephyr is probably going to be a lot better in that regard, or even other units with just a better res stat. But even then, if you already invested it into Arden, it's really not going to be too bad. You may lose some dragon matchups here or there, but I do think for what it's worth, Arden is still going to be really, really strong. Still, now that you have a dual phase brave weapon, any armor can pretty much do the same thing. You also have Summer Leon, who has a really big attack stat on top of really good mixed bulk, so naturally a distant counter advantage set could always work. It's not necessarily going to be as strong as other candidates, maybe like Valentin Pala or Keaton, but for what it's worth, he does have a really good attack stat, and even if he has to take a hit, he has good mixed bulk, so I'm not really worried about it in that front, which is why I do think he could run it pretty well. You also have Spring Bartray, who also has a really good attack set. His res isn't exactly the highest per se, but with Wyvern Katana, he can actually make for a decent Gale Force set. He does hit pretty high attack anyway, so with something like Clash, Low Attack Defense, and Times Pulse with Heavy Blade, he shouldn't actually struggle to get a Gale Force proc going unless there's a guard effect. Which, at that point, you could always use Tempo, but I would wait for an Attack Defense Tempo to come out, because I do think that's going to be a lot better. You also have two other infantry candidates in the form of Ulster and Nemesis. I do think these builds can be interchanged, but I wanted to come up with something a bit more diverse so it's not the same copy-paste stuff, despite it not really being too crazy on its own anyway. Still, you can use something like Special Spiral if you want to spam Ignis, which isn't a bad idea, especially since he does have good mixed bulk, and that can actually help with a good amount of stuff like Seleth matchups if he has to go up against a Brave Seleth, because one of the problems with the weapon in particular against Brave Seleth is that you're only going to be able to attack twice, and if you can't reduce his HP to 1 on the first hit, then you're not killing him, which is why I do think something with an Ignis or maybe a Glimmer, I don't know if Glimmer is going to be doing as much, but I do think Ignis will definitely secure that. Although you could also run a Bulwark set as a melee specialist with Finish and Joint Drive Attack. Attack Chris Finish isn't even a bad option, especially since it can cover Dragon matchups, but with Ignis and Steady Breath and Wyvern Katana, you're not really going to be struggling to take out a good amount of foes. You could also run a Null C set for guaranteed damage, and while this is definitely going to be a bit more niche, it can cover stuff like Brave Alm, which can actually make or break you depending on where you go. 
But still, you are giving up a B slot for what otherwise could be something else, but still. That's the benefit with Dual Phase Brave in my opinion. You definitely have that open B slot. You don't necessarily need no follow-up. You're not really going to be running damage reduction because the speed deficit definitely does hurt in that front, but I'll go into some candidates in that regard in a second. And outside of that, there really aren't too many other options, although you could still run LOL and all that stuff. So, no C Disrupt is definitely not a bad option if you have the bulk for it in my opinion. Outside of that, you have Ashnard, who can also act as an enemy face tank. With Defense Risk Catch and Mystic Boost 4, he already has really good mixed bulk. So with these skills in tow on top of Rain, he's not really going to be taking damage whatsoever. Maybe he will take some damage from a bow because he is giving up IOTs, but otherwise he should be able to shrug off a good amount of damage. That with Quick Repost and his seal, he should be able to quad in the enemy phase akin to the likes of Brave Seleb, just without the desperation effect. Although if you do want something a bit more mixed phase for that dual phase Brave effect, then you could just run Near Trace, which isn't a bad option whatsoever. But so, it's basically going to be the same thing as Ashnard's build, except rather than Quick Repost, you're just continually stacking stats, which isn't even bad, especially for tanking purposes. Outside of that, you could also run a decent Aether Raid's Defense gimmick set. You can run Wyvern Katana with the two cooldown defensive special. With that, you'll be able to charge it, and with the Flecked Melee in tow, you could basically shrug off a good amount of damage, the idea here is that if you were to use Near Trace in Defense Rest Smoke 3, then he could move back a bit afterward, set up Pathfinder, and you could snipe kills potentially, which I do think has some potential. You could also do some gimmicky double Black Luna set, and this may not necessarily be the strongest set for Black Knight in particular, but I thought it was worth highlighting considering you could still get two Black Lunas, assuming that you quad and you don't kill on the first three hits. It's pretty cool. Beyond that, you could also run a modern sortie with a good speed stat and a really decent attack stat in the form of a godlike reflexes build. I already talked about it with Lazo in particular, and I do think it still works pretty well for Aether Raid's purposes. However, because now you have an inheritable Wyvern Katana, you're much better off just investing in a modern sortie with a modern stat line. And while he may not get as much attack as maybe Lazo would, his speed definitely makes up for it in that regard, and you're not really going to be seeing too many differences, unless you're going to be running into stuff like Brave Seleph, but even then you could just stack attack and speed and you should be fine. And yeah, even though it does have a minus 8 speed penalty, I still do think it could work pretty well for really fast sorties. And outside of that, you could always just give it to some sort of Aether Raid's defense unit, whether that's Lyph, Mirabilis, or Legendary Sigurd. For Lyph in particular, he doesn't have to give up Open the Future and Deadly Balance, which is a good thing comparatively to running Arcane. So with this, he could always get open in the future regardless of which phase is initiated on, and you should be able to eat at least one hit. You could always keep Distant Counter, but I do think Clash is probably going to be a better option for him. Still, with Wyvern Katana, Type Post, and Quick and Pulse, he is definitely going to be a bit more threatening on defense, I feel. For Mirabilis' case, you could just make her into more of a combat unit. I know people already gave her Brave Sword, which isn't a bad option anyway, but now you could just give her the dual phase aspect, and with Catch and Attack Defense Rain, she should be able to hit pretty okay, and eat a hit when needed, which I don't think is a bad option whatsoever. And finally, we have Legendary Sigurd who has Holy Knight Aura. You can still run basically the same build as you would with his PRF. However, with Wyvern Katana, you're definitely going to be pulse high proof in that regard, which is definitely going to be a lot more beneficial, especially when it comes to just getting Holy Knight Aura off, because you could always just get shut off by something like even Pulse Tide, which is entirely possible, but you will still have to watch out for Stall. Still, out of all the swords that we have in the game, I found that these were definitely going to be the highlights, and if you do have a sword with a good attack stat that can replicate a good amount of stuff here, then they're probably going to be a decent candidate too. Of course, you're definitely going to want to run some form of support, whether that's with the bow or the sword, because these supports do apply for both units. You could run maybe a Brave Lucina, or a Thor or a Summer Thor for the Breath effect, meaning that they could get specials out really consistently, and you could free up stuff like Seti Breath Sacred Seals for even more stats, or if you are running a Flyer or a Cav or any other archetype that can't use the Breath stuff, then they're definitely going to be beneficial on that front. You could also use Moosebo if you are worried a bit about the Seleph matchups, because with the true damage in tow from Domain of Flame, you'll more than likely reduce his HP to 1 on the first hit. And beyond that, if you can find similar types of support that could either provide breath or true damage, then it's going to go pretty well. Now, comparatively to something like Ninja Katana, 
I find that even though Wyvern Katana does have the dual phase brave aspect, if you are going to go into the player phase and you do have a decent amount of speed, I find that Ninja Katana is probably going to be a bit better, not only because it does have one extra might, which means you can secure kills much more easily, but it does grant additional speed and you can make flashing blade checks, which is definitely going to be a lot better than heavy blade checks since attack is just through the roof. However, if you were to go into an enemy phase or a mixed phase set, obviously Wyvern Katana is going to be a lot better because Ninja Katana only works in the player phase. That on top of the fact that you also get bulk from Wyvern Katana, so you can actually take hits whereas Ninja Katana is depleting your bulk comparatively. Still, if you're going to use something like Gale Force or something for Wings of Mercy Chaining, I find that Ninja Katana is definitely going to be a bit better. Of course it will depend, if you're using something like Ashnard with basically no speed, then it's not really going to matter as much there comparatively. But if you do have a decently fast unit, then it's probably going to be better that you run Ninja Katana. Otherwise, Wyvern Katana is going to be a lot better in my opinion. And then we have Wyvern Yumi, which is definitely going to be a bit more limited in terms of scope, mainly because a lot of bows that have a good attack set don't necessarily have a good speed set, and the ones that do have a good speed set don't really have a good attack stat. Or if they do, they already have a better weapon to work with. So with that, I'm only going to cover the units that really stand out to me. Starting with Masquerade Quan, who could use this with Solid Ground, Wings of Mercy, and Attack Defense Rain. So not only can he dance and avoid isolation, but he can actually attack, which I think is going to be doing a bit better than Eldigan, mainly because it does have the dual face Brave aspect. Although the moment that an enemy targets his res, he's probably going to go down. But even then, with Solid Ground and Attack Defense Rain, he's probably going to be able to avoid isolation on a consistent basis. And then with Wyvern Yumi, he should be able to hit pretty hard in both phases. You can also do the same thing with New Year Plumeria, although I would recommend this for Anima, mainly because she doesn't have a good defense stat and she will get isolated by Milla. You will still have to worry about the likes of Bridal Fiorn, but she's not nearly as common, mainly because she isn't a mythic. Still, with Wyvern Yumi, you can run something like Sabotage Defense and Close Reversal, so that way she can act more supportively as well. And then with Aerobatics, she can just teleport around, provided that she can reach, and just hit pretty hard in general. And with close reversal, she could be a bit more threatening comparatively. Beyond that, you have the armors for far safe purposes. Whether you want to use them as a tank or you want to use them for vantage, I think both have value in their own right. So for tanking purposes, Valentine's Fae is probably going to be a bit better because she does have a lot better mixed bulk. So with Distant Defense 4 and Crafty Fighter, she should be able to quad in the enemy phase. Again, provided that there isn't any no follow up or any effects that shut down and double. But still, with that, she can tank really, really easily and get out a good amount of damage, and you may not even necessarily need breath support, since she'll always be able to get two Moonbows out. Although, if you did want breath support, while Dead Eye isn't really going to be as easy to trigger because it is a three cooldown special, you can still run him with Moose Spell, get a good amount of damage on the first hit, and basically just be a bit more threatening in the enemy face, stack up your attack and res as much as possible, not only to make up for that res stat, but also just to bolster your overall damage output, and you can just be a really threatening Vantage unit. And I'll go into why this may be a better option comparatively to modern day Vantage units. But for now, we can talk about the Cavs, who can either run a mixed tank set or a two range tank set. They're definitely going to be a bit more limited because enemy face Cavs don't really have a lot to work with. But because it is enemy face Brave, they're not going to be nearly as limited. So for Henry, for example, you can run a close reversal set with low attack defense and joint drive attack. So that way he can just eat hits for days, assuming that they're physical, and get a good amount of damage out. But you also have Valentine's Roy who could act as a mixed face tank. He has a lot better res at 43 at max investment, which is really, really good. And you could give him skills that help bolster that role. I gave him attack and defense skills mainly because you're definitely going to want to attack first and foremost, especially when it comes to Brave. On top of the fact that it's only 6 might. But with something like Far Trace, Attack Smoke, and Double Solo, he should be able to not only get a good amount of damage out, but he could run away a bit afterward, and he could function in both phases. And finally, for the Infantries, there's not really going to be much comparatively to the others, but you can still run a player phase or enemy phase set, whether that's with Time's Pulse, Quick and Pulse, Deadeye, so you can get Deadeye on every second hit, and with Sturdy Impact, you can prevent doubles, assuming that they don't have any no follow-up effect, or you can run some gimmicky enemy phase set with Quick post 3 and no follow up. And this does seem really weird comparatively, but with no follow up and quick post, you'll always be able to secure quads in the enemy phase unless the foe has no follow up themselves. And with Wyvern Yumi and Deadeye, he'll always be able to get a Deadeye out, which is really, really good. And with George in particular, he has really good mixed bulk, so he's probably going to be a lot more annoying comparatively. And beyond that, 
There's not really much when it comes to Wyvern Yumi candidates, but if they have a good attack set with low speed or they fulfill some sort of decent criteria that a lot of the other units here do, then it's probably going to be worth it. Still, comparatively to the likes of White Cap Bow, I find that White Cap Bow, at least for player fight purposes, is going to be miles stronger. Not only because it just has so much more might, but you could use it in modes such as Arena. If you do care about that, it does have speed, which means you can potentially quad. And if you wanted to shut down any sort of follow-up attack or even counter-attack, depending on the foe you go up against, you can run something like Wind Sweep or Water Sweep. You can still get two attacks out, which is really, really good. Still, for dual face purposes, Wyvern Yumi is still going to be a bit better, but for player face purposes and speedier units alike, I do think White Cap is definitely going to be a lot better. Outside of that though, I just wanted to briefly talk about the Vantage role. As prior to these inheritable weapons, a lot of the time Vantage units had to act akin to Omni Tanks back in the day where they basically had to take on all the foes. You could always prioritize one range and run a far save, but at that point you could always just run two saves and that was always going to be better. But now that it's inheritable, you can run double save with double vantage, or you could just run two saves with dual phase brave. And the vantage part may not even be as necessary for the armors in particular, because if they're already going to be doubling on top of the fact that they already have good mixed bulk, they can fall back on their survivability comparatively. So if you were looking for a decent vantage composition, I do think that running double armors is probably going to be a lot better going forward. Unless you were to go against teams that have any sort of wind sweep or fire sweep effect based on speed, in which case you could use stuff like male chaise, or if you want something that was a bit more flexible in the player phase because the armors don't really have good movement, you could just use something like Valentian Pala or Lex or anything with good movement, or even Finn. Lex maybe not the best example, but still, he does have that freedom. And overall, I do think these inheritable weapons are going to be really, really strong. Granted, they are limited in scope because 8 might and 6 might with a big speed penalty, but still, I do think there's a lot that you can do with them, and if you do plan to inherit these weapons to specific units, let me know who, because I'm curious on who you want to give these to. The sword is definitely probably going to come out more because it is free, but still, let me know your thoughts down below, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you later.